Inside Science. Hello, I'm Ali Jennings, and here's a quick roundup of what's been happening in science this month. And it has been busy. We've seen how space travel can change our genes, we've witnessed bizarre insect behaviour, and we brought a zombie pig brain back from the dead. But by far the biggest hype this month was for this. Now it might look like the stain from a coffee cup, but it's actually the first ever image taken of a black hole, a super dense ball of matter spinning at the centre of galaxy M87 53 million light years from Earth. And the data that make up this picture confirm decades of black hole theorising and open up new possibilities for studying the fundamental physics of gravity. But to get this image, researchers had to solve a couple of tricky problems. First, how do you take a photograph of something black on a black background? Well, the answer is you backlight it. So the black hole is circled by superheated spinning matter called an accretion disk. And the accretion disk constantly throws out light, and that silhouettes the black hole. And that's what you can see in the picture. In fact, the black hole curves space-time so intensely that we're even seeing light coming from matter behind the hole, light which was originally travelling away from Earth, but has been bent around the black hole and redirected towards us. Which brings us to the next issue. Now this black hole is really, really, really far away. So even though it's about the size of our solar system, the researchers calculated they needed a telescope the size of the Earth to zoom in far enough to see it. But since Earth-sized telescopes are in short supply, they had to come up with a different plan. They worked out they could use a network of telescopes placed around the world to capture different parts of the image from different angles. And then they used an algorithm to calculate the whole picture. A little bit like calculating what a jigsaw puzzle would look like if you only had half the pieces. The image is right at the edge of what we can resolve in the sky, which is why it's still blurry. And the reason it's lopsided is because light from the side of the accretion disk that's spinning towards us is brighter than the side that's spinning away. So even though the image feels a bit messy, it's profoundly dense with meaning. Now this black hole has now been christened Puehi, Hawaiian for an embellished dark source of unending creation. And you can read more about Puehi in this article on the Inside Science website. I'm staying in space, but a little bit close to home. NASA have shown for the first time how extended space travel changes the expression of an astronaut's genes compared to a genetically identical person on Earth. The study took two identical twins and they put one in the International Space Station for 340 days, whilst the other one stayed right here. After the first six months in space, the spaceman showed a six-fold increase in the number of genes that were being expressed differently. And six months after his return to Earth, 811 of the total genes studied, including genes involved in immune function and DNA repair, still hadn't returned to normal. So, it looks like we've got a bit more to learn about how space affects our genes before we start sending colonists to Mars. But although space might mess with our bodies, I do hope we'll never end up voluntarily self-exploding. And that's what these soldier aphids are doing here, spewing out huge amounts of gooey fluid from their innards that solidifies to repair a hole in the wall of their home. And a new study out this month has found out just how they do it. Their bodies contain two different kinds of liquid, which harden when you mix them together, kind of like a biological version of the super powerful adhesive glues that need to be kept in separate tubes and only mixed on application. But instead of two different tubes, the aphids store one liquid in their cells and one in the fluid surrounding their cells. Now, when they need to plug a leak, the aphids burst their own cells, mixing the two liquids together and then squirting them into the hole like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. And this process is so violent, it often kills the soldier aphids outright. A moment of silence for our fallen aphid brothers. Although it turns out that maybe death isn't quite so terminal after all. If you're a pig, that is. Researchers from Yale have restored cellular activity in the brain of a pig that's been dead for four hours. 
When you die, your heart stops pumping blood, your tissues lose oxygen, and the cellular energy stores in the brain are gone within minutes. Now that, we've always assumed, is curtains, triggering massive cell death and structural breakdown. But these researchers designed a special blood substitute, which they heated, oxygenated, filtered, and then pumped back into the brain through the carotid arteries. And when they looked at the tissues after six hours of treatment, the cells seemed fine, structurally, metabolically, even with some neuronal signaling intact. Now, this isn't a total Lazarus affair. I mean, living brains have widespread specific electrical activity that you can measure as an EEG, and the experimenters measured none of this. Although, that might be because the solution contained chemicals specifically to dampen this kind of activity. Were they alive? Were they dead? And this study challenges our whole notion of death. And that's about all we've got time for, I'm afraid. But rather than end on such a morbid note, um, I'd like to flag up the following discovery, perhaps the most earth-shattering of the whole video. It has been shown that cats can recognise their own names, although whether they care is a different matter. You can read more about that in this article on the Inside Science website. I've been Ali Jennings, thank you so much for watching, and I'll leave you with this fabulous image of the Southern Crab Nebula, released by NASA this month to celebrate the Hubble Space Telescope's 29th birthday. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.